You are very, 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 very small. When we first saw Grounded less than a year ago, the pitch was to adapt Obsidian's signature RPG style into the survival genre. Having recently launched into early access on Steam and Xbox Game Preview and Game Pass, it's currently much more of what you traditionally expect from the latter than it is influenced by the former. But what's here so far is entertaining enough, and despite a few stumbles, clearly has a lot of room to grow. Obsidian had previously said that Grounded would incorporate strong story and RPG elements alongside the survival aspect, and while you can see hints of that, there's not much to speak of yet. With no ongoing narrative beyond some collectible audio logs, I hit an end of story content message after less than an hour, it's the Honey I Shrunk the Kid style setting that's currently doing most of the heavy lifting. It doesn't really diverge from the traditional survival game structure in any particularly meaningful ways. You pick an avatar from one of four teens who've been shrunken down to around an inch tall, and spend your time exploring and gathering plants, rocks, and bug parts to craft items and build your tiny home. You can collect daily activity bounties like visiting specific locations or researching specific items from Burgle, the only NPC, and who handily provides the most obsidian-esque material throughout, but beyond that, your adventures aren't really in pursuit of any goal beyond the ones you set for yourself. While it surely plays a little fast and loose with the relative sizes of certain objects and creatures, Grounded's mega-sized take on a suburban backyard is fascinating to explore, and I was always intrigued to discover a new landmark or easter egg that helped flesh out the world and my role in it. This is due in no small part to the fact that Grounded looks great. The miniaturized world you inhabit is rich and verdant, and it benefits heavily from some especially gorgeous lighting effects. Daylight hours are filled with constant reminders to stop and savor the beauty of the world around me, and the way moonbeams pierce through the light fog that blankets grassblade forests, coupled with some truly great sound design, added a ton of eerie atmosphere to nighttime exploration. Eerie might not be the right word, though. Terrifying is probably more accurate, because Grounded is, at times, just as much a survival horror game as it is anything else. And it's not just the 12-foot-tall spiders, either, though they're far and away the big winner of the scariest thing in the Yard Award. There are plenty of other mini-monstrosities out to get you, too. From ants the size of German Shepherds with razor-sharp pincers, to the tiny mites that spring towards you like fuzzy little head crabs. Exploring at night and running into a pack of hungry larvae, or spelunking into an old anthill just to run into the spider who'd made its nest there, provided some hair-raising scares and instilled a sense of tension that carried over into every step I took. To not end up just another bug snack, you'll need to make use of your superior human intellect and do what we do best. Destroy the world around you with zero consideration for its delicate ecosystem and use what's left to build cool stuff. A robust and interconnected crafting system is the hallmark of a solid survival game. And Grounded's early access offering definitely has a lot for players who enjoy the endless grind of harvesting materials to convert into other materials that you can then turn into a house, or a trampoline, or armor made from the carcasses of your defeated enemies. Where Grounded stumbles hardest is that this process has trouble staying fun. It's definitely satisfying to tear off that final piece of an ant you need to complete a new armor set, but the battles required to get all those ingredients stop being particularly enjoyable after I killed my fifth ant. Combat essentially boils down to circling around an enemy when it attacks, then darting in to chop, stab, or club away some of its HP and repeat. Sure, there's a parry system that can help boost your chance to stun a creature, but even then your armor still takes damage, so it was almost always more efficient to just keep strafing. Of course, you can always just climb up on a rock and fire an endless barrage of arrows at an enemy too, because hostile AI seems to have little to no sense of self-preservation. And while that may be true to their insect brains, it made all but the most stressful of battles a fairly boring affair. I also lost count of the number of times I made mental notes to use the Submit Feedback button when crafting new items or trying to build up my base. It seems crazy to me that a game so heavily focused on crafting in 2020 wouldn't have the foresight to feature a Craft Max button, or the ability to craft at a workbench using items from nearby storage bins, or an auto-craft function that automatically consumes the raw resources required to create something. Similarly, I realize inventory management is a key part of any good survival game, but having to shuffle around individual items instead of stacks at a time was rough, and it felt a little odd to not be able to craft more mobile storage, or at least build items that would let me create stacks of previously unstackable items, like a sling to bundle spears together, for instance. Between the tools needed for harvesting and the weapons and armor needed for self-defense, it felt like my inventory was always at least half full before I even left home base. None of these issues are particularly awful, but it was a lot of minor inconveniences that added up to a decent amount of frustration. Adding friends to the mix doesn't lighten the load, either. 
Since one player has to serve as the host, that means anyone joining their game will be starting from absolute zero every time. Progress doesn't transfer back to your game world either, meaning if you want to have a consistent experience with friends, you either have to agree to be the group's permanent host or be totally fine doing all of your building in someone else's save file for the entirety of your game. And even then, you'll need to make sure you leave all of your gear in one of their storage bins before locking out. On top of all that, Grounded is, and please forgive the pun, pretty buggy. There's nothing I would consider particularly game-breaking, though I did experience a couple of hard crashes on my 2015 Xbox One that caused some minor progress loss, but I ran into some pretty noticeable jank throughout my time with it. Bugs often get stuck in, on, or against geometry. If you're hunting a bug and it gets too far away after taking damage, its HP will often fully reset. And placing foundational elements of my bases, like walls or stairs, often came down to me having to actively glitch the system in order to get it just where I wanted. Grounded has a lot going for it. It's a really inventive setting that's fun to explore, with some pitch-perfect opportunities for the team to deliver on the Obsidian side of its initial pitch in the future. Currently, however, it feels a bit sparse in terms of both available content and quality of life considerations. And while I really hope Grounded grows and blossoms into the truly special adventure it could become, it's still got a few yards to go. For more on Obsidian, check out the reveal trailers for The Outer Worlds' Peril on Gorgon DLC, or the studio's next first-person RPG, Avowed. For all your other gaming needs, big or small, you're already in the right place here at IGN.